this session. Um, to begin with, I want to thank you for uh, making time to attend this session. I'm Dilip Berkey. I'm a product manager in the Salesforce DX product management team. Over the next 20 minutes, I want to talk about how, as an ISV, you can get started with Salesforce DX. And before I do that, I want to show you the safe harbor statement. I'm sure you've seen this a few times. I will be talking about future-looking technology, so please make your uh, purchasing decisions based on existing technology. In terms of agenda, I want to spend some time talking to you about the benefits of Salesforce DX. If you are already doing managed packages in your traditional way, why should you even really be interested in Salesforce DX? What's the value proposition? And once I set the value proposition, I want to talk about how can you get started? Like, what are the first few steps you can take in your uh, Salesforce DX journey? The partner technical evangelist team has put together a bunch of uh, really helpful resources, and I want you to want to point them to you for that, and then recap and open up the floor for Q and A. And even if you run out of time, you can I, I'll be around and we can continue the conversation. With this. Let's get started. The first thing that I want to talk about is what are the benefits of using Salesforce DX? And if you look at this wheel, what it highlights is as part of Salesforce DX, we did not look at one particular aspect of application lifecycle management and try to improve. We looked at it end to end. We wanted to make it a much better experience for your development team when they build apps on app on our platform for App Exchange. So if you look at it from a development standpoint, we introduced Salesforce CLI, which enables your developers to run commands on a CLI versus doing things in the setup. Uh, there has been a significant investment in enhancing VS Code so that you can um, use, the, use it as a modern IDE. Um, we have uh, introduced this concept of scratch arts, which are ephemeral environments. You can create scratch arts by using a CLI command, so you can create and delete orgs very easily. Not only that, with scratch arcs, you can really configure what's the shape of the org that you want. So before Salesforce DX, you, could, you had to use developer edition orgs, which came with all kinds of stuff. And I think scratch arcs is a much better environment for your developers to work with. And of course, we have, uh, by offering most of the frequently performed operations via CLI, whether it is creating a package or installing a package. We have made it possible for you to start setting up CI and uh, continuous integration in a much, much better way. But the thing that I want to highlight here is we have tried to use, look at the whole experience versus look at one particular aspect and enhance it. In terms of improved developer experience, I mean, if you, if you were to take the developer persona, one thing that's very important is we emphasize source-driven development. We know that when it comes to managed packages, the source of truth is what's in your packaging org, but it's possible for you to externalize that metadata, put it in your version control system, so when your developers are working, they don't have to be constantly worried about the packaging org. They can work directly off of the version control system, of your choice, and it becomes much easier for them to iterate over changes. With VS Code and Salesforce CLI, they can stay longer in their terminal and in their tools of choice versus spend time in Salesforce uh, setup tree. And we feel that this will enable your developers to have a better experience because they can bring in more modern tools. Now, as I said, Scratch Arcs makes it much, much easier for any developer. You don't have to, they, your developer doesn't have to wait for someone else to give, provide them with an environment. They can manage and configure all of them in a very, very easy manner. And finally, we did invest time when we built Salesforce DX to provide a source decomposition format is what we call. So if you open up a custom object using simple metadata API, you'll see that all the information about the custom object is in a big XML file that's very difficult to work with. Whereas with Salesforce DX, there is a significant amount of decomposition, so it becomes very easy for your developers to work with one particular aspect of the metadata. Now, if you were to look at this from a release management standpoint, one thing that we did was, we, if you remember, we had a pilot feature called branch orgs, and with branch packaging orgs, it was possible for you to create an org with, with the namespace, but it was very messy and convoluted. 
But with Scratchers, it's possible for you to seed it with the namespace of your managed package, which means your developers and your QA can work with namespaced uh, metadata. You don't have to worry about scrubbing and descrubbing. The other thing that is very important is for your release manager, one of the foundational difficulties that existed before Salesforce was DX is it was very difficult to upload. It was very difficult to automate things end to end. For example, the upload button. They had to go and click the upload button in the packaging arm. But we have looked at most of the commonly performed operations with the exception of creating the package, acquiring a namespace, and uninstalling the package. Everything else can be automated. So any time your developer checks in something, it's possible for you to pull that check-in, push it to the packaging or create a package version, spin up a scratch or install the package, run the test, get the results, and you can do all, all of these things using CLI commands, which means you can automate. So we think it will lead to a much better release management experience for your uh, team. And finally, when it comes to version control system, like when, when we talk about version control system or CI, we are not tied to a particular thing. It's, it's an open framework in the sense that you can use the version control system of your choice, and you can start externalizing or you know managing the package metadata in a version control system as opposed to the packaging org. So hoping that this convinces you to use Salesforce DX, how do you really get started? Like, What are some of your first steps? Um, that there are three things that I want to talk about in this section. One is the concept of a developer hub. The second one is Salesforce CLI, and third one is VS Code. In terms of the developer hub, developer hub is not a brand new thing that you go to. It's not another type of org. It's a capability that you can enable in your partner business org. So think of developer hub as just something that enables your partner business org to do more. And what can you do? With the developer hub capability enabled in your partner business org, you can create scratch org. So you can, you, we do provide for Salesforce partners the ability to create, I think, up to 100 uh, free users. So you can make your developers users in the partner business org, and they can run the commands to create scratch orgs. You can take all the packaging orgs, and you can link the namespaces that are owned by you into the dev hub so that now you can start constructing scratch orgs with any of the namespaces associated with your managed packages. All these capabilities are now possible in the partner business org once you enable dev hub. And dev hub is something that's available. You can just go to the setup tree and enable it, and you should be good to go. In terms of, like, this is something that we have been asked very many times, and I want to point out, like, like let's dig deeper. Like, what more can I do? Like, if you're an active partner, you can have up to 80 uh, new scratch orgs that you can create in a 24-hour period. You can uh, have, you can maintain 40 active scratch orgs. As I said, you, you get about 100 licenses that you can uh, use to create user accounts for your developers. And also, we are adding a lot more features. Like, for example, we know that uh, if you're using environment hub capability, you tend to create developer edition or enterprise edition trial orgs based off of this partner edition that has increased limits. You can create such scratch orgs if you tie your dev hub to partner business org. And also we provide newer capabilities around Apex debugging in scratch orgs so that just like how you are doing Apex debugging, you can do that even with scratch orgs. In terms of Salesforce CLI, like what are some of the capabilities? The first thing is with Salesforce CLI, you can run the commands against any org. So for example, you can connect all your packaging orgs, your dev hub to the Salesforce CLI, and you can, when you execute a command, you can execute the command against a particular org. So you can run a command to retrieve all the metadata from your packaging org by running that command against the packaging org. If you're creating a scratch org, you can use that to, um, against the dev hub to run the command. So one common misconception is you use CLI primarily for uh, creating and discarding orgs. In reality, you can run Apex tests. You, you can do a whole slew. You can create package versions, install packages. You can pretty much think of doing most of the operations by using CLI. The, uh, the other thing that is very important to point out is we have built the CLI on the open source 
framework, what we call the Oak Cliff framework. So a lot of customers and developers have already started creating their own commands. So you can extend the tool belt that we are offering and start creating commands that are more relevant to your use cases. And finally, you can see that as other Salesforce properties start building features, they are trying to see how they can extend this framework and add more commands so that you can gain advantage of all those capabilities. In terms of VS Code, uh, I think you should, you, should, you should interact with VS Code. It, it has a much richer experience with uh, code completion, with, with, uh, with, with coloring and texting. And, and not only that, you can run most of the CLI commands from within the VS Code framework. And uh, when you look at Lightning website components and other kinds of newer technologies that we're introducing, they all work very, very well with uh, VS Code. So putting this together, in your path towards adopting and embracing Salesforce DX, you can enable the Dev Hub in your partner business org, start creating users for your developers, install the CLI. CLI can be installed in Mac, uh, Windows, and uh, Linux. Uh, you can connect your packaging org and retrieve the content. And I've just created this schematically to show how you'll get started. You'll start with your packaging org, you'll retrieve the metadata, put it in your version control system, and once you do that, your developers will be going to the version, like uh, your developer gets a user story to work on. They can now go to the version control system, pull the metadata, make the changes using VS Code, push the metadata to a scratch org, run tests, get results, and check this stuff in to the version control system. Now the release manager can come in and say, okay, I know that this particular change has happened, this user story has been checked in. Now, the release manager can now deploy this metadata to the packaging org, create a package version, install them in a scratch org, run tests, gets reports, all of these things can be automated. And we feel automation and productivity is, are some of the foundational benefits of using Salesforce DX. So in terms of other helpful resources, the ISV Technical Evangelist community, community has put in a wealth of resources. For example, this particular URL takes you to about 105 minutes of video that, that walks you step by step how to go about doing all the stuff that I spoke about. Um, you, can, uh, you should take advantage of this. It's available um, on the website. The other thing that is very important is we have more in-depth information, which are all partner focused, right? I mean, we, we do have all this information geared both towards partners and customers, but when you look at these URLs, they contain information tailored for the needs of our partner community. Uh, and finally, this is one place where you can even see videos of past sessions that we have made, a trailer DX, a dream force, where we talked about how, as a partner, you can take advantage of different capabilities of Salesforce DX. At this stage, I want to have a bonus uh, section for this. And this is about second generation packages. Some of you might have heard me talk about second generation packages in the last Dreamforce and trailer DX and be wondering, what happened? Like, why did this guy stop talking about it? Um, the good thing is we have been working very actively towards taking second generation packages. It's currently beta, and we want to take it to GA, Safe Harbor in winter 20. And second generation packages has a whole slew of benefits on top of first generation packages. We, it's something that our partner community has loved in terms of feedback that we received in beta. And right now, what we did in summer 19 was we provided the capability to support second generation packages with LMA, FMA, and subscriber console. In winter 20, the plan is to provide additional feature parity around post-install scripts and patch versions. We are working actively with the App Exchange team so that a second generation package can be listed on App Exchange, it can be submitted to security review. So our goal is to get to a stage where when you start building net new packages, you can start using second generation packages. And once that happens, the next step that we are marching towards uh, is to provide the capability for you to migrate your first generation package to second generation package. The reason why I bring this up is we have not forgotten about this mission. We are very actively working, so we'll have some good stuff to share when we get to Dreamforce. With this, should you wait for us to launch second generation packages before you use Salesforce DX? Why do this now? Why not wait? And we feel the answer is a strong no. The reason being, all the good things that you get by adopting Salesforce DX, by becoming comfortable with this process, is going to directly help you when you 
start looking at second generation packages. So we strongly recommend that you start using Salesforce DX. Let us know what it is that is missing, and we will continue to enhance um, for this. In terms of second generation packages, like how do you get engaged? We have a Trailblazer community. There's a link here. There are lots and lots of partners that are actively engaged. So if you're not already there, please join the community. You can use the same manage, same metadata of your managed package and build, test second generation packages, play with it, and again, give us feedback. And all the stuff that we're doing around LMA and FMA, if you're interested, please reach out to me. I would love to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis and see how we can get more feedback in terms of all the stuff that we have built. Um, the, the point I want to highlight is both when it comes to Salesforce DX and second generation packages, we are heavily invested in making sure that our partner community is successful. They can take advantage of all these features. So you'll see us continue to invest in this area. With this, I want to open up the floor for any questions. Um, if you can't hear me, we can figure out ways, but let me know if you have any questions. Okay, the question was, can Scratch Orgs have person accounts be turned on? Um, I, in most likelihood, it should be possible. I, I would say yes. The way it works with Scratch Orgs is you can set up features. So there's a bunch of feature framework. So, the, so you can go to a Scratch Org definition file, which is a JSON file, and you can turn on all kinds of features like person accounts that you want. And we are continually working towards reducing the gap. When, when Salesforce DX initially went GA, there were a lot of features that were not supported. But we are, we are at a stage now where most of the features uh, that are GA can be expressed in the Scratch Org definition file, and you should be able to create a Scratch Org with that. Hi. Uh, Hi. You mentioned that uh, we can use a packaging one uh, when we deploy to packaging org, then we can push to scratch org. And uh, if we do that, then because managed package doesn't allow us to delete some sort of components, so how it's going to work with that? Should we work with the beta packages or we can use the managed release packages? Can you s tell me, a, can you keep the mic a little closer? I'm hanging. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah. You yes, that's good. Is it good? Yes, okay. yes, it's good. So you mentioned that uh, we can use packaging one uh, to, to create package uh, and uh, push to scratch orgs, then we can test on it, right? So should we use beta packages since managed release packages doesn't allow us to delete some stuff if yes, something goes yes. wrong? Yes, yes. Our recommendation is that you create a lot of beta package versions as part of your CI processes when you're 100% sure that things are working fine, you can create a new version that's a managed release. Uh, but the recommendation, so, so when you, you issue the package one version create command, you can specify whether you want a beta version or a release version. And our recommendation always is create beta version, double check, triple check to make sure that you're getting what you want, and then create a new version that is released. I think he has a question. Uh, I've noticed that source push is much slower to use than the tooling API. Do you know when uh, performance might improve? So in terms of, like, if you are encountering an exceptionally poor performance, we always recommend that you log a case. But um, across the board, when you look at all kinds of uh, metadata operations that are asynchronous, we are looking a lot into how we can improve the performance of them. So you may still have a specific issue that we would love to hear, but uh, in general, we are trying to see whether it is source push and source pull, metadata retrieve and deploy, package version create and install, what can we do? We're instrumenting a lot of stuff to see where we have opportunities for improving performance. Anybody else? Hey, thanks a lot for uh, coming to this session. Have a nice trail at the end.